So let's continue talking about selling to the customer. We, we in the last section, talked about the multi-point inspection form and how important of a relationship building tool that is and how important it is as a sales tool. Well, there are a number of other things that we should talk about as sales tools. We said a couple sections ago that knowledge is power. Knowledge is everything. And those customers at your counter that are feeling very anxious because A, they don't know, and B, they have to have you, and C, the industry has this terrible reputation. What do you have at your disposal to give them knowledge? You may or may not have an assistant service manager or service consultant that can, can provide them knowledge in an articulate manner. So, sometimes individuals have just enough technical knowledge, um, but not quite enough. How do you get across what's wrong with a vehicle? There are a number of ways of doing this, and I think by far the easiest way is, is what many organizations do, and, and it's what I call show and tell. We walk the, ve the customer out to their vehicle, out in the repair shop, and we show them what's wrong. Now, some shops have a big sign hanging somewhere on the door after the shop that says, due to insurance regulations, no customers allowed. Well, think about what message that sends. And whether it's true or not, I don't know, I won't question that, but think about the message it sends to the customer. It basically tells the customer, you stay here, we're taking your car back there, and no, you can't see it. Well, how would you feel if they took your five-year-old to the dentist and the dentist says, we're taking your five-year-old back here, you have to stay here, you can't see him. It wouldn't make you feel real good, right? Think about how customers feel about their cars. To, ca to customers, cars are very, very personal items. So those signs saying absolutely no customers allowed, eh, I'm not real warm and fuzzy about. There are better signs out there. You can, you can get the signs that say, due to OSHA regulations, customers aren't allowed out here unaccompanied. And if they're accompanied, that's fine. Well, that may very well be a better way of doing it. Because by taking the customer out to their vehicle and showing them what's wrong physically with their vehicle, not only does it send the message that you are honest and forthright and transparent, but it also gives them the chance to see the person that's working on their car. Never ever underestimate the power of that. Many customers strongly dislike the fact that they no longer get to talk to the person working on their vehicle. They get to deal with the person here at the counter and not the technician out in the shop. Meeting the technician, having a conversation with the technician makes many customers feel very at ease. Now there's another approach I take with that also. I tell technicians when I do technical training classes to introduce yourself to the customer. Make sure at the very least the customer understands who you are. Put their first name on the repair order or put their first name on the multi-point inspection form. Some organizations put uh, you know, employee number on there, technician number. That's not as good as putting Rick on the MPI or Joe on the repair order because what's that customer gonna do? If I take the customer out to the repair shop and I show them, hey look, we did the 52 point inspection, we removed your wheels, here's what we see. Look at your brake rotors and here's what they're supposed to look like. And look at your brake pads and here's what caused that. And then the technician Joe is standing right there and Joe can point this out or explain that to the customer. When I come back for another repair, that customer may very well ask for Joe. Hey, can Joe work on that? Because they formed a relationship. Oh, and what did we say trust was? How do we get to trust? Building relationships. It's all a part of getting to trust. So use show and tell as, as, a, as a policy to try, to try to impart knowledge with your customers. Other ways, other tools that you can impart knowledge with your customers, there's a, a number of, of laminated posters out there, there's a number of, of electronic programs out there that show systems, that show system operation. Because show and tell works until you get to things like, I don't know, timing belts. And if I'm at the counter and, you, and I say, well, what's a timing belt? Why am I going to spend $300 on replacing it or $600 on replacing it? And you go, well, it connects the top to the bottom, goes round and round, and car won't run without it. And that's not enough for me. You're not going to take me out in the bay, pull a timing cover off to show me what a timing belt is. So you need, you need a better tool. You need a picture or you need a video. Ask your parts suppliers what they have available. Oftentimes, parts distributors and parts suppliers have many of these tools available, either for free or for sale. Ask them what they have available. Keep an open mind. See what would work best. Ask your counter associates what they would like best to help them sell these things. All right. So identify what tools. 
that you have at your disposal. Now, there's some other simple things that you can do. I've seen shops where in a very nice waiting room, they've got a brand new roll cart from a tool company, a roll cart, nice and shiny, and it's filled with old and new parts so that customers can look at it and or the service writer can come around the counter and pick up an old brake pad and a new brake pad and say, look, here's what a new one looks like. This is roughly what yours looks like. Or different wear patterns on brake pads or chunks of tires that they've cut up showing specific wear patterns. They're show and tell pieces where the customer doesn't have to go out in the shop. Maybe they're in a hurry, they don't have time or they don't have the right shoes or they're not interested, but the cart's right there. It gives the customer something to look at while they're waiting also. A very unique idea that I've seen is one waiting room created an entire wall of pegboard. So on that pegboard wall, they took new and used parts and they wire tied them to the wall. Nice and neat, they took all the sharp edges off, but it did the same thing the roll cart did, only in a bigger display. And the service rider could walk over and say, here's what a timing belt looks like. They had the, the crank pulley, the cam pulley, and the timing belt. And they can use it to explain. So think about what you can do in your shop. Just you know, think about the hazards, the sharp edges, and, and you know, dust and dirt and all that stuff. Uh, and do what you can for that. But you can create some very nice displays for little to no money. So all of these tools are to be used to impart knowledge to the customer. Knowledge is power. Knowledge will help that customer's anxiety come down. Introduce them to the technicians, take them out to the vehicle, and show them the vehicle, and create something in your waiting room. It's all about education. Sales is education.